Fandom battles, fandom battles, fandom battles he ho Fandom battles, fandom battles, fandom battles are go. Welcome to this episode of Fandom Battles, where we pit five fictional characters up against one another using an arbitrary category, and have you folks vote on who you think deserves the mark. Then I do silly art of the winner. The last vote we held was for most likable villain. DC's Joker surprised us all by getting absolutely no votes. Mystique also came in with zero votes. Vegeta the Prince of All Saiyans came in third. Alphaba came in second place with a good chunk of the population, but at the end of the day, the Dark One seems to have made a deal with our voters coming in way over the top. So now that we know who we're going to be drawing, let's go to the shuffle. The shuffle's where I mix up this stack of cards, each one marked with its own strange attribute, and pick out which one might be the most interesting to portray. And on the draw we have N7, Musician, and Beacon Student. The Beacon Student thing can probably get wiped. They have somewhat of a uh, magical background already, it just seems a bit repetitive for what we're going for with the Dark One. Alternately, the N7 designation used in Mass Effects for it's mostly an armor aesthetic, and I really feel like drawing Mr. Gold outside of his suit isn't going to hold up very well. Musician, I think we can do something with. For those of you who don't watch Once Upon a Time, the Rumpelstiltskin Mr. Gold Dark One character has a fantastically complex narrative. Not only does he have his evilness rooted in a desire to protect family, he has this constant nagging draw of wanting to somehow redeem himself, but he also has overlapping character constructs. Not only is he the Rumpelstiltskin Mr. Gold character who likes to make deals with people and leaving them at a disadvantage. As far as Once Upon a Time is concerned, he is also the Crocodile from the Peter Pan construct and the Beast from the Beauty and the Beast construct. They have found very interesting ways to weave his character throughout the universe and make him a very strong fixture in a lot of what happens. Combine that with the actor doing a fantastic job of making this character charming and fairly sympathetic when no one's looking, I can totally see why he's the most likable out of the set. And here you have it. We have a Mr. Gold playing the saxophone, his Dark One Command Dagger tucked in belt. Next time on Fandom Battles, we're going to be looking at sympathetic katana wielders. Michonne is of the Walking Dead fiction. She has a pair of zombies that she has domesticated, who had previously been her best friend and her boyfriend. Afro Samurai, from the series, the manga, and the movie Afro Samurai. He's the main protagonist of the series, often accompanied by a split personality version of himself. It creates a fantastic dual expression of who he is trying to be and the parts of his personality that are trying to push through and remind him that he's human. Next up from the Metal Gear series, we have Raiden. He was a child soldier known as Jack the Ripper. He evolves into this cybernetic samurai badass. Betsy Braddock, the twin sister of Captain Britain. She was originally presented as a telepath with precognitive abilities, but then eventually had her mind transferred into a Japanese female ninja, which is where she absorbed most of her fighting talents from. Beatrix Kiddo. Originally, she was part of a five-member assassination squad called the Deadly Vipers. After becoming pregnant, she decided to pull herself out of that life, changed her identity, and tried to slip under the radar, and then later is found by her former team, who tries to kill her, fails, leaves her in a coma, of which she eventually wakes up from, and then goes on a highly justified path of payback. Which one of these five do you think is the most sympathetic katana wielder? You are more than welcome to place your votes in the comments below. However, you can also head over to patreon.com slash shaded areas, become a patron of the Fandom Metal series, as well as the other branches of the Creative Acclamation podcast. Patrons of the appropriate level get poster calendars every month featuring the Fandom Battle portrait, as well as many other types of virtual and physical rewards. If you look to the right, you can see the lovely and talented people who have helped make this project a little bit more professional than it has been in the past. Remember that the subscribe and like buttons are below and waiting for your attention. And never forget, friends, you're awesome.